My Lords, I rise to speak to my amendment and in support of the amendment of the Noble Baroness Lady alone with specific reference to parts three and four. Many of us will have received an update from our party whips on today's business. My update stated unambiguously that, and I quote, even though this is government policy, it will be a free vote. No beating about the bush, my lords. This is official government policy, which we are being asked to support. I think this bears closer examination. In asking noble lords to support the fatal amendment in the name of the noble baroness, Lady O'Leary, I should make clear that while, I'll be, while I will not be moving my amendment to a vote, I am asking noble lords, by supporting the noble baroness's amendment, to reject the official policy of the government and therefore the Conservative Party, because it undeniably promotes and perpetuates disability discrimination. My Lord, as the youngest member of the National Disability Council, which the then Conservative Government created to advise on the implementation of its groundbreaking Disability Discrimination Act 25 years ago, I helped define in codes of practice, what disability discrimination actually looked like. Central to the concept was the premise that there should be evidence of less favourable treatment on account of a human being's disability. I would be interested to know how my noble friend, the Minister, thinks denying a human being diagnosed before birth with a non-fatal disability like mine, the equal right to be born is somehow not less favourable treatment. My Lords, I have seen disability discrimination close up. I know what it looks like. Which brings me to report by the UN Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women or CEDAW. I'm sure my noble friend is familiar with paragraph 85, section 7, page 21 of the report. But just in case not, let me remind him what it says, and incidentally what the government is deliberately choosing to do against. As the noble baroness explained, it states that abortion services should be expanded, and I quote, without perpetuating stereotypes towards disabled people. No doubt my noble friend will be able to quote back to me paragraph 62, section 6, page 16. But let me dodge his memory. It states that the committee aligns itself with the UN Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in the condemnation of sex selective and disability selective abortions, both stemming from the need to combat negative stereotypes and prejudices towards women and persons with disabilities. So, my Lords, I would be intrigued to hear from my noble friend, the Minister, how what the Government is pushing through Parliament is compliant with the Committee's recommendations in paragraphs 85 and 62 that I have just read out. Perhaps I'm being stupid. After all, I'm only a disabled parliamentarian. Perhaps I'm missing something, or perhaps I'm not. Perhaps the government could not care less about flouting not only the committee's instructions, but your lordship, how, lordship's house, says clear instruction, given almost a year ago today, on 17th of July 2019 when it amended the Northern Ireland Executive Formation Etc Act 2019 to implement the recommendations of paragraph 85 of the CEDAW report. And I have to ask my noble friend, the Minister, why does he think CEDAW, the Lordship's House, and more recently the Northern Ireland Assembly have all focused 
on the danger of stereotyping. It's hardly rocket science. My Lord's the answer lies in two words. They both begin with the letter D. Disability, discrimination. That is what the Conservative Party claimed to have outlawed when it passed the Disability Discrimination Act in 1995. Yet here we are, a quarter of a century later, with the Conservative Party back in government, asking people to continue to believe they are against disability discrimination while imposing it on the only part of the United Kingdom that is a safe haven for human beings diagnosed with disability before birth. My Lords, in conclusion, I implore the Prime Minister to intervene and save the credibility of his promised national disability strategy, which I presume is to counter discrimination. As a proud Conservative, I reject this government policy of disability discrimination and I urge all noble, noble lords to do the same.